Welcome everyone to today's webinar hosted by Caring.com with our special guest, Kent Lewis, Chief Marketing Officer at Dexia. We are so excited to share what I consider to be a very meaty presentation today on digital marketing fundamentals. And we're going to continue to dive into some trends that are impacting the industry and disrupting the way that we must think and work as digital marketers. So as we begin, I'd like to cover a few housekeeping items for today's webinar. This is a one-way webcast, meaning only Kent and myself will be able to share video and audio throughout today's presentation. However, we would still love to hear from you. At any point throughout the webinar, please submit your questions using the Q&A link on your screen, and we'll be answering those questions live following today's presentation. One of the most common questions that we receive is, will this webinar be recorded? And the answer is yes. We are recording today's presentation, and we plan to distribute out both the recording and the slides in the next couple of days. So this free webinar is brought to you by Caring.com. Now, for anyone here who's not familiar with Caring, uh, we are a leading online resource for senior living and senior care. Our organization was founded by caregivers for caregivers. Our flagship website, Caring.com, was created and launched in 2007 to equip family caregivers to make better decisions, save time and money, feel less alone and less stressed in providing senior care to their loved ones. Today, we have a portfolio of websites and referral services that help millions of people research senior living and senior care online, and thousands of senior living and home care agencies partner with Caring to reach their target audience who are actively searching online. So one of the main reasons that care seekers turn to caring is for our high integrity reviews, where we have over 350,000 consumer reviews. So first, let's kick it off with some introductions. My name is Olivia Duke. I'm the B2B marketing director here at Caring, and I will be serving as the moderator for today's presentation. More importantly, we are very excited to have Kent Lewis joining us from Dexia. And Kent, I'd love, you know, to allow you to introduce yourself and share a little about your background. Yes, thank you, Olivia, for hosting this and for caring for uh, allowing me to share some insights for you all today. Uh, so a quick background, I'm a Pacific Northwest native uh, with a background of PR and started my digital career in two, uh, 1996. By 2000, I, I founded my second agency, Anvil Media, which was acquired last March by Dexia, a Midwest-based agency out of Grand Rapids. Uh, I've founded or co-founded some other organizations, including PDX Mindshare, which is a online career community on LinkedIn. It has its own website with jobs and events. And SEM PDX, a trade organization for uh, search engine marketers in particular in the greater Portland area, Pacific Northwest. I have been teaching as an adjunct for, at Portland State for over 20 years and over seven years for SCORE. I teach a social media marketing workshop as a volunteer instructor. So all in, we're talking about 27 years of, of marketing with a focus on digital exclusively. And I'm proud to share some of those insights today. And I do just want to highlight, you know, the significance of 27 years in digital marketing. As a digital marketer myself, it's very rare to come across professionals who, you know, predate the dot-com bubble and everything. And so keep that in mind later. When we talk about some of the disruption in the industry and some of the trends, you know, Kent brings a really unique perspective, um, at having seen a lot of significant shifts in the industry. So, so very excited to, to have you here. Thank you. Here's a brief look at the agenda that we plan to cover for today's webinar. So first, Kent will give a refresh on digital marketing fundamentals, including the channels that you should be managing and key performance indicators in those channels. Uh, then he will dive in a little deeper, sharing Google tools uh, that can help you track performance and a refresh on best practices within SEO. And then finally, Kent will walk us through some of the trends that are disrupting the digital marketing industry. But before we get into all this great content, I wanna set the stage for today's presentation. You know, if you are part of your organization's sales team, you probably think about your referrals from caring and the leads from your website as these two different buckets. Um, some of you may be thinking, why does caring even care about, you know, helping us with digital marketing? But in reality, that customer journey is not linear. A consumer that may initially find out about your community or your agency on caring.com will continue their research 
and they're likely going to touch several more of your digital marketing touch points along the way. So here is an example of where caring typically lives in that journey, right at the start of the consideration phase. Caregivers who don't know where to begin turn to search and they're searching generic terms like assisted living near me, maybe home care in my area. And they're visiting Caring's portfolio of websites to learn about what options are out there. And then after being referred to your community or your agency by caring.com, you know, they're looking further and they're maybe exploring your website. They're perusing your social accounts. Maybe they were even added to your email distribution list. So strong performance across your digital marketing channels helps nurture those caring prospects. And you're going to drive more move-ins and more clients from your caring referrals as well as your own channels. So without further ado, I will hand it over to Kent, uh, who's going to cover the digital marketing fundamentals refresh. Thank you, Olivia. That was hugely helpful. And uh, I just want to say the, the importance of understanding the customer journey is both non-linear and non-channel specific. We're going to talk about that a little bit later with trends, um, like uh, concepts like omnichannel marketing. But let's start with the basics and a quick fun fundamental refresh of marketing elements. So um, I want to start with the reminder that the world is, is digital. Um, you could call it flat. If, if you're a, a flat earther, I'm flat digital, meaning the internet um, spawns, uh, spawns all over and spans the entire globe. Um, so most, you all have websites. You all may have, you have some sort of mobile presence, whether you're using full-blown SMS strategies or you're dabbling in the web three dark arts of, of blockchain, NFTs, and the metaverse. Uh, more on that later. Um, so the interactive is the foundation of where you collect information, help target and nurture relationships through all the digital realms, um, but primarily website. And then there's the ad side. So you've got print, broadcast, online. You've got partners like caring.com that have resources and, and options there. And then there's the, so that's the paid bucket. And then there's the own bucket, content you create that you distribute through your own channels. Typically, social media, technically, you may not own Facebook um, or LinkedIn or Instagram, but you own the content you create on those platforms. So it's a way for you to control the message and the brand, and it can be very powerful. We, I, we call that organic social um, at Dexia. Um, one of my favorites and where I started my career is in the world of search engine optimization. And the reason I say that is there was, there was no paid pay-per-click until 2002 when I started as Olivia reminded us a long, long time ago before I had gray hair and I had more of it. But um, SEO, search engine optimization has been around since search engines, but it didn't really evolve until 98 when Google came on the scene with the concept of page rank. And we'll talk more about that where you couldn't just cheat by putting keywords all over your website and the code and the copy. So uh, we'll talk about that. PR, I started my career in high-tech public relations and have taken those tool sets to 10 different agencies and two different in-house jobs and have built brands. PR builds brands, advertising defends it. That's uh, one of my brand uh, strategist friends say, has said that the last 20 years and I love it uh, because I was in PR and I like to think that I'm building the brand and the ad people are just defending it. Um, it's, more, it's more nuanced than that. Advertising can build a brand. Um, but the third party validation of PR is undisputably empowerful, empowering, incredible. And we call that earned media. So you earn the right to get into these third party places, which used to be print publications, online publications, it could be an article I mentioned on, on caring or elsewhere in other industry publications, but it can also be speaking and writing and all these other tools, awards. I'm a big fan, highly recommend that you have a, have a meaningful budget or partner a resource for, for managing your earned media. Uh, direct response, we all know print mail and, and the audiences that I know of, of senior care, senior living are, um, you're not always looking for the one looking to move in, you're looking for the, the family, the loved ones, the children, the siblings, the caregivers, the professionals, um, not just the kids and not just the, the, the potential resident themselves. So direct used to be print, now it's a hybrid. It can be print, email, some some combination of those. Um, and events are still effective. Here we are in a webinar uh, with, uh, with over 700 uh, registrants, which is super exciting. Um, but it, it uh, creating a connection in person, it's hard to beat that engagement of that face-to-face, -face, but webinars do a fantastic job 
in the place, lower cost, greater reach. So um, doing kind of onboarding with potential um, prospects with, uh, let's take a tour, let's meet with some of the um, facility uh, you know, employees and some of the experts on staff. Uh, those kind of events or even a hybrid of those could be very, very uh, powerful. Social media, we know what that is, but are you playing around with TikTok? Have you tested Be Real? I just took a picture on Be Real and posted it to my, my Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Um, you can find me at Twitter at Kent J. Lewis um, and check out that post. Um, so that's the front and back camera working together. TikTok has a similar functionality. Um, and then the email marketing component, and that's where I've been spending my time now that I'm CMO, Chief Marketing Officer of Dexia. My job is to drive in at marketing qualified leads or MQLs, similar to maybe many of you on the on the webinar. But in my case, I'm I'm relearning email. I launched an email marketing agency back in 02. And within a year, I was gone. So 20 years ago, I was doing email marketing for clients. And now I'm learning HubSpot kind of for the first time as, as many other platforms I've already used to try to get the nuance to build programs for inbound and outbound nurturing. And it's a necessity in, in the senior care, senior living space to have systems like that that are tracking from initial contact all the way through to move in and through the, the life cycle, um, especially the, the uh, younger influencers of family members and professionals. So uh, a couple of little quick stops. Just a reminder that what worked yesterday may not work today or tomorrow. So you should always be testing, testing your messaging, your creative, your targeting. It's really important um, to, to understand that if you have a scientist me methodology, which um, is brought up in a, in a great book called Think Again by Adam Grant, if you think like a scientist with complete curiosity and humility, as you approach your marketing, you will be far, you know, let's call it five times more successful than a market says, I've been there, done that, like me. I have been there and done that, but that does not mean I'm done learning. We're, we're heat mapping our, our Dexia website as we speak right now. We never stop testing. So starts with your Google ads, you know, multivariate testing, performance max, you know, ways like Google do the testing. In the old days, we had to manually do that testing and then other ad platforms or other platforms like DoubleClick came in and made that easier, um, um, optimizely. A lot of different tools you can use to, um, to test, but Google's new de facto is we'll do the testing for you. So people that manage uh, Google ads or other digital ads have become more of asset managers than the ones actually determining what, um, you know, how to do and go through the testing. A lot of that has been uh, automated. And then there's the idea of testing messaging through the world's largest focus group, also known as social media. So uh, when I do my social media workshop for SCORE, I talk about it's the world's largest focus group. It's the world's most cost-effective customer service platform across all the platforms, right? The social platforms you're aware of. Um, and then, yeah, you can do some marketing and some thought leadership and, and e-commerce brands can sell stuff. I mean, I guess you could sell some move-ins if you have really compelling posts, right? but I see it as a research tool. So use your organic social and your ads to test messaging much as you would like Google. Or frankly, Bing, a little side plug for Bing, previous to their whole chat GTP AI thing that's come out the last couple of weeks uh, is that Bing has always been an excellent platform for a more seasoned audience. Uh, we've found great success in the 45 um, and older audience our demographic, which is a sweet spot for this audience. And, but the downside to Bing is the volume. The volumes are a lot lower. And the reason mainly is because it's a default browser for Microsoft um, um, OS, which is common on the most PCs that most older people buy. So that's why there's such a built-in audience at Bing. So don't forget Bing. And it's easy to replicate a Google campaign on Bing. Message testing, so email, you know, obviously, you should be segmenting your list and you should be, but you can also A-B split test um, certain subject lines, lead in images, um, you know, sub headlines or, or body copy, just like you would a, a landing page for Google ads or your, or your any ad campaigns is always be testing. A-B is the easiest way. Statistical significance, remember, you need 500 completions to know that you've got something, you know, within a margin of error that's giving you good data. So sometimes you have to add uh, run campaigns on landing pages or email campaigns into the tens of thousands or into you know a month or two before you get the good data. But again, Google has automated a lot of that on the ad side. 
Um, and then another great uh, tool is um, building pop-ups on your you know, nth visitor pop-up survey. Take this survey, be uh, diligent with it, but also just um, pop up for every time and cookie them is uh, sign up for our newsletter. A pop-up is okay if you, as long as they click it and close it, that you never bother them again. They've been presented the pop-up to join your email list. Because at the end of the day, you don't control or own these social platforms. You don't control or own these search engines and other places. You know, Caring is a phenomenal partner, but unless you are a lead investor, you don't own Caring. So it's important for you to be building your own database and pop-ups on your own website can do that. Um, now, again, this is a complimentary tactic to do to your partnership with Caring and other, other channels, just a reminder. And you can see this example, um, assisted living near me. And you can see there are a couple ads showing up and one of them has a bunch of ex uh, site extensions or link extensions uh, for the four additional links. That's a lot of extra real estate with no cost versus the one below it. So um, that's of course caring, maximizing the real estate and driving you qualified leads through the partnership. And then uh, just a reminder, I have an article that I write, write regularly for the Business Journal for Smart Brief and for, and I've written in the past for caring, but um, just some reminders, there are some things, you, these are the timeless tactics you should, should always be remembering. Master the fundamentals in 2022, 2023, 2024. Uh, and then, you know, your boss has probably asked you about your KPIs, right? Your key performance indicators. So these are the ones that I was, I was told, Kent, you need to build a marketing plan for Dexia, which I, I wrote last September. Even though we were acquired in March, it took six months to hand over operations and sales and account management so I could just do marketing. So I built my own marketing plan for the first time in over 20 years. And reach and awareness, I put under one bucket, which is just getting out there, getting the impressions, getting the, the name brand, the, the pings, right? Um, so that could be physical signage, mostly digital signage, like where is your logo, your name, or links to you, mentions, reviews like on caring.com, where are they showing up? And so these are some of the examples of what we track as our KPIs, rankings in search, number of followers or impressions in social, um, traction in terms of the quantity and reach of any articles that I might syndicate or podcasts I might post or be a guest on, um, video views on YouTube or the other channels that have video options, which is almost everybody, website traffic resulting from all of these different channels, event attendance, event registration, um, and then just you know email opens, right? We know that they they saw and read that email. So those are reaching aware and, and awareness phase at the top of the funnel. Then we've got those engagement slash interest metrics, which are, I know who you are and I'm interacting with you. So likes, shares, views, follows, clicks, subscribes, download requests, um, you know, tour requests, et cetera. Also ratings and reviews, which absolutely drive your business. As you know, having real strong reviews on caring.com are, are critical to your success, as well as any other site from Google on down. Um, you know, and then Matt, you know, tracking a lot of times when people do subscribe to either a webinar or a virtual tour, they're at a certain level of the stage that are likely to convert. So you need to make sure you're capturing that in your KPIs. I also look at how long are people visiting our website? How many pages are they hitting? What's, what pages are they coming in most commonly? And which ones are the highest bounce rate, meaning they're leaving off of those pages? And your contact page or thank you page is where you want them leaving. You don't want them leaving from anywhere else. Um, and then lastly, the, the other element that I'm mostly held accountable for at Dexia now is MQLs, marketing qualified leads, basically leads that are companies that need help with marketing that I can hand over to sales to work their magic. And that's the same thing for any of the facilities or properties is the idea of like somebody comes in through an inbound channel, uh, your website, your social, um, or some of your outbound work through email or your sales team messaging out um, directly. Um, how are you capturing and nurturing those? So we use HubSpot, but I've used almost every other platform from Salesforce to Active Campaign to Act On, you name it, over the last 20 years. And they all have the same basic function functionality, even MailChimp. Um, if you're starting on a budget, which probably very few of you are, um, it, it, it has the basic CRM functionality to do some basic automations. But if you want to be next level and scale, if you have multiple locations and multiple, lots and lots of beds, you're going to need um, a more robust platform. I'm not paid by anybody to say that, by the way. Um, so that's kind of what to keep in mind with your marketing qualified leads. And for some reason, this is not 
There we go. So next up, Google tools. We've all heard of Google. We have varying degrees of like, lust, or hate for them, but they have definitely been a critical gateway and a, an essential marketing tool uh, for the last, we'll call it, um, 20 something years for most of you. Um, and so the idea here is to, a couple things. One is you should all have Google Analytics. Even if you have another analytics platform, you should have at least Google Analytics. Now the problem is we're now moving to GA4, Google Analytics 4, which is a totally different architecture. So you have to migrate. So we're helping, we've already helped, we helped all of our clients move like nine months ago or whenever it first uh, was known that this is gonna happen and here's the timeline. All of our clients have already moved, um, but there are severe limitations to GA4 to be sure, but the future potential is much bigger than the limitations of um, the, Google, uh, the current Google Analytics platform or the historical one for the last 15 years. So the idea is that either one will give you top keywords organically, although they'll give you um, the, you know, a not specified or not provided, which is super helpful. Um, they do that to encourage you to pay to play by using Google Ads to get that data, super fair. Um, but at least you can be looking at your top, you know, maybe the top five to 10 keywords or phrases and understand how people are finding you. There should be no surprises there. And then your top landing pages. I think these are just some of the basics. I like to look at the top sources. I like to look at um, just who's coming into my site. Over time, you wanna look at your sources based on conversion because I could get thousands of leads from let's say this webinar, but if none of them converted, but I had one email, one lead that came through a, an old blog post that converted, well, should I spend more time there or more time on, on a different channel? Um, or different content. So Google Analytics, GA4 migration. Um, obviously, if you have any questions or need any help with your GA4 migration, feel free to reach out to, to me after the, uh, the webinar. Happy to help you there. Um, again, sessions, understanding the users are not just hits. When I first started, it was just hits. That's all you knew. It was website hits. But they then it was page views. And then it was sessions. The idea of somebody comes in, does something on your site, and leaves. They come back later, they do something slightly different. You start to paint a picture. And that's where Google Analytics combined with an analytics um, um, marketing automation platform like HubSpot or equivalent can give you a really, really clear picture of where people are in that journey that we saw at the start that Olivia talked through. Um, but again, conversion by channel. In fact, if you can reverse engineer, start with what's working and reverse engineer to get more of that. Um, I think you're going to find yourself far more successful. And then there's Search Console, where as 95% of you are using Google um, um, Search, I'm sorry, Google Ads, I, I find that only 10 to 20% of, of brands are using ser Google Search Console. There's so much invaluable information that Console provides, and that's maybe it's up to 50% because it's kind of more integrated into Google Analytics now and Google Ads than it was before. Um, but it gives you really critical information like where you may be ranking but not getting clicks. Because uh, Google Analytics great at showing you where you're getting the traffic from, but not where you're not getting the traffic from, meaning potential traffic sources. So you're ranking for a, a phrase, senior care near me, senior living facility near me, but you're not getting the click. Why is that? So you look at your the results page and see, is there something about your title or meta description that's not compelling and not driving the, the click? That's all important to know. Um, but it's also really important for not only that, to not only know your top rankings and your traffic opportunities, but also to know what is not working about your site. Google is really persnickety and assumes you have all the time in the world to build the world's fastest website. They care so much about speed. Speed is a credibility factor now. And so it's important that you look at uh, the technical site help that Google provides to help you build a faster and more um, error-free website because it's as speed kills. A slow site um, gets lower uh, conversion rates Therefore, Google thinks, well, maybe I shouldn't rank them as high, then you get lower traffic and you spiral down until you're, you're closed. So you wanna reverse that spiral up by having a fast site with you know, great content that ranks well, gets more traffic, more traffic, more credibility, higher conversion rates, faster speed, it all works together. So your Google search console and the page speed um, test from Google is really important. And then there's Google ads. So with Google ads, uh, pretty state, top, top, the starting point is what keywords or phrases are am I buying? What keywords or phrases are my competitors buying? How are those keywords driving in, ter uh, in terms of impressions, clicks, and conversions? 
So with keyword forecasting, you can use Google Trends and Google Ads has their own tools and do some competitive benchmarking against certain phrases or even against some, you know, some branded phrases across competitors. A lot of fun things you can do with the Google Ads platform. Um, but it, forecasting is one important thing to do to look at kind of where the where keywords are dying in popularity and which are increasing, what phrases are up and coming. Um, and then always be looking at your landing pages. Um, every, everybody should have custom landing pages based on audience target um, segment, um, the stage of the buying cycle, whatever the offer is. And the idea there is that landing pages have stripped down navigation because the more choices you give people, less likely are to make any choice whatsoever, right? It's, it's, it's literally overwhelming. So you typically have stripped down top or, or side navigation or footer navigation to get them to do one of two to three things max, and that's it. So landing pages need to be designed specifically for conversion, and they need to be continually optimized through testing. On the SEO side, just to refresh, uh, you know, I mentioned I, as an instructor, as an adjunct professor, my job and my passion is, is synthesizing complex topics and concepts into any, something that anybody can understand. And that's what I did with the three C's of SEO 20 years ago. So nothing has changed. Very, I should say very little has changed with the three C's, but a lot has changed with everything under that. So we've always had to have content on our websites to rank. The difference is before Google came around from 93 to 1998, you could put content anywhere, white text on a white background, hidden in the title, uh, keywords or meta description tags, hidden in div tags, hidden wherever. And the, the less, uh, the more rudimentary web um, crawlers like Excite and um, web crawler and et cetera, they, they would just say, oh, they've got all the content, they win. And that changed with Google, which had a much smarter, you know, AI driven equivalent algorithm saying, this content is HTML text, so I trust it. It's not hidden. It's not the color, it doesn't, is in high contrast with the background. So that content becomes key. Um, so without, if you don't have the text, HTML text on your site with um, key phrases like senior care, senior living, facilities, care, you're absolutely not going to rank, period. Doesn't matter. And that used to be 90% of the algorithm. Then the code came along. Google's like, well, we got to look at the code. If we don't trust, that's why Macromedia Flash is no longer around. It's been gone for 15 years or more. I mean, 10 to 15 years. So uh, that was vector-based images. It could be layered and you could hide things. Google didn't like it. So they basically pushed them out of business. So CSS is the way to build a layered site with function complex functionality or layouts. So code, Google can read almost anything now, but do they trust a PDF more than they trust text? No. Do they trust an image? A little, even with uh, recognition of characters or facial recognition, they still don't trust an image like they trust text. Google is blind. So you have to uh, appeal to the blind with ADA compliance. In your industry, that's a good thing because ADA is a big factor in this audience. So building a site for the disabled is gonna ingratiate you with Google. And the last is, but most important, probably 40 to 50% of the algorithm is credibility factors. How old is your domain? When does it expire? How long have you had relevant content on there? How long have you been driving meaningful traffic? Um, how fast is the site? Uh, and, and then mostly what people understand that no SEO is the quantity, and quality in reverse order um, of links coming to your site from other related domains. So a link from caring.com, a, no, a, a follow link is worth gold. Google, caring has such high credibility domain authority with Google that a link, a mention, a citation from them to you is worth gold. Even a no follow link carries trust. It may not carry Google juice over to your domain, but it carries trust and it's, and so, um, the relationships with carrying, carrying an equivalent become extremely important. So that's why when I do a search for top rated senior care Portland and caring is up there, their domain authority is so high that they only need to put in senior care, assisted living once or twice in the, in the body copy or in the code and they're there because they have the credibility nailed. And that's why they're a successful partner for, for attendees. Um, and you can read more of my article from like very long ago. It's practically in black and white. Anyway. So um, content, keyword audit process. So I'm just reminding you that whether you're doing Google ads or SEO, search engine optimization, organic or paid, 
you still need to go through the concept of thinking in keywords. This isn't as difficult or challenging for the senior care, senior living space. Um, but I will say it's really hard for the high tech companies I work for. Um, most of them were selling comprehensive integrated solutions, leveraging synergies, cross-platform shifting paradigms into the new millennium. Now, I just said a bunch of BS, but I had clients that literally would have said, good job, Wordsmith. But that means nothing in the world of Google search because none of you would have searched for that. It would have been help desk software, right? Or something equivalent, whatever it is, doesn't matter. My point was in PR, as I moved into SEO, I realized marketers don't talk the same language as customers. And in the senior care space, that's not as big of a, a disconnect. It's a very small chasm at best. The best marketers, the best salespeople speak the same language as those looking to get themselves or their parents or loved ones into, into senior care. So it all starts with talking to your customers, your clients, your who, whatever, your residents, whoever you want to, uh, however you want to name them, but they speak a certain language. You know, I need a I need a nursing home. Well, we don't like that term. Well, too bad. Um, you still have to use it, but you don't have to use it. With SEO, you could use it as a blog post saying, nursing homes do these things, but we don't call them that anymore. We call them, you know, um, care facilities or whatever you want to call them. But you can use that blog post to capture those people or use a landing page. You can buy the keywords and just, and you, but you have to mention them to carry through the scent of the buying a keyword, have the ad copy associated with that and the landing page. You got to carry that scent through for a good ad campaign, but you can de-emphasize the use of nursing home and emphasize elder care or senior care or senior living or whatever those the desired phrases are. So move them from what their language is and change their language over time to where you want them to be. Um, validate that language with your employees and then um, do a quick search on Google to make sure that the keywords that you think or your CEO or the facility owner is like, I really want to rank for this. <clears throat> you do a search on Google and you're like, none of these results are relevant. So even if we rank number one, I can tell that we're not get, you know, the likelihood that this is going to drive relevant traffic. But I learned long ago, I put my ego aside to say, let's, I, there's ne never, there could, what I think, be a dumb answer or a dumb idea of a keyword or phrase, but let's not, let's put that aside and just say, let's let it, let's test it. Let's test it with a quick ad campaign. Let's optimize a blog post for it and see what happens. So let's not all be too judgy about it. Let's test and see, does it drive good traffic and good leads? Um, Looking at competitors can save you time, especially your competitors you know are savvy. Um, so the big players, the Brookdales have spent a ton of money and time on digital and you can just look at them and just a cheat sheet. The beauty of, of looking at websites is you can look at the code, you can look at the content, you can look at their credibility, who's linking to them and build an entire SEO strategy off what Brookdale's already doing. Apologies to Brookdale that's already on here if anybody's from Brookdale's on this, but just know, that that company is doing has taken it very seriously and you can learn a lot from them. I'm not paid to say that, they haven't been a client. Um, prioritize based on data insights. So you look at your Google Analytics, you look at your search console, what keywords are driving traffic? Look at your marketing automation platform. Um, you know, where, where are the leads coming from? And let's go target messaging to those platforms. And then create or revise your website content. So I don't know how many of you have um, blogs, it hasn't been sexy for 15 years, but it's still number the one that like a top three SEO strategy is creating fresh blog posts. Now, just because chat GTP can do it in 10 seconds doesn't mean that you should. You can use it to inform and build out raw content that you then massage. But um, once you know Google decides, yep, we're cool with it, we're not cool with it, we're cool with it again, just assume eventually they will not be cool with AI generated content. So write it yourself or tweak it heavily so it clearly has your voice and it clearly has a human voice to it. And so the idea, but the bonus points is to create an FAQ, a frequently asked questions, not just about your facility or about your organization, but about senior care, senior living and facilities and skilled nursing versus um, elder care, et cetera, because people will look for that content and then Google uses something called rich snippets and we'll just pull that question out and when you click the drop down, it'll say provided by you, or in a lot of cases, caring.com. You want to be that best answer. So when you talk to right next to me an ALEXA or my Google home in the other room, say, you know, um, Alexa, um, what's the closest no nursing home to me? So it says, I found a few options. There's Turtle Liquor Plaza, 1.4 miles away on Southwest. Turtle Alexa, Liquor stop. Liquor. So Twilliger Plaza was a client of ours. Coincidence? No. Okay, more on that later. 
uh, best practices. I actually did that on the fly. I didn't know I was going to do that. It's really cool. So let's talk about some of these resources on the content. So I, I, I teased it with the FAQ idea in the blogs, but let's talk about that a little deeper. So on the home pages, believe it or not, if you do just a copy, just um, scroll over your mouse over all the HTML text on your home page. Just write this as a to do. Drop it into Microsoft Word or Sheets or whatever, and do a word count. And I bet only five percent of you have three hundred to five hundred words on your home page. That's a lot. But that's what Google, top ranking top ranking home pages have three hundred to five hundred words on their home page. So put that feather in your hat. Uh, number two is on your deeper content pages, facility details, service details, care, whatever blog, um, deeper, not even necessarily blog posts, but like article format. Top rated content used to be 22 to 2300 words. It's gone down to almost just over 1800 words. So I'm recommending to clients that your, your short blog posts are 750 to 800 words and your longest ones are over 2000. Um, but I tend to want to break, break those into parts um, so people can digest them and not just build things for Google, build them for their proper application where it's in con context to those reading about it. So really concerned um, loved ones, younger folks like me when I, um, had toured some uh, facilities near me when my dad had a minor stroke. It was like I would have read that deeper content because I want to know exactly who are these people, what are their what's their credibility, what's their philosophy on on care for my father. Um, make sure to embed links internally, not just to um, not just to resources across the website, but to key pages. Google looks the entire concept of the World Wide Web is is the relationships and understanding relationships of page to page, site to site, right. And then the external links should always spawn new tabs, new pages, so that when I'm looking through caring.com and I click on a link to your facility, Brookdale, wherever, that it opens a new tab so I don't lose that traffic. When I close that tab, oh, that's right, I was in caring.com. So that's a fundamental thing that still, I'd say three or 5% of sites are not doing, usually in error. Um, mentioned this already, blogs and FAQs are powerful. And don't forget the conversion elements, right? So book now, call us, um, schedule a tour, et cetera. These are important. So that's all credit content ideas. Let's quickly talk about code ideas. So you need your XML sitemap. You can just write these down. You get a copy of this to the recording in the deck. Um, and we have a ton of resources, um, not unfortunately on the Dexia site yet. We're moving it over from anvilmedia.com. We have a huge resource section on this, but XML sitemaps, robot text files, custom 404 error pages, um, optimized titles with the right keywords, unique to every page, about 65 characters there. Your meta description, about 140 characters that gets the click, not the rank. The keywords don't matter in the meta description. The sizzle does, adjectives, adverbs, calls to action, call us, visit us. And then your alt tags or alternative tags for images and videos and other media to give context to Google who is blind. So these are all elements. So that's a custom 404 from right at home. And what it does is instead of a custom and just sort of a blank white page not found, custom 404, the standard 404 error page of death means we're out of business. We close our facility. But in this case, I still see all the navigation, the branding, and calls to action. Um, all of that is still within the um, within a custom 404 error page. So a very important part as you most of you have large sites that have evolved. It means you have orphaned or dead pages. You need to capture those without, if you don't 301 redirect them, you need a 404 to capture those er erroneous visits. So, um, and then what else here? It's froze up, come on. Let's see if we can get this going. There we go. Schema, this is a fun one for the super nerds out there. Schema is context, schema.org. Um, you can basically add context to say, this is our name, address, and phone number. This is a common question and here is our answer. So using schema for error FAQs, there's schema markup for blogs, there's schema markup for almost everything, but that way Google who is blind, you're giving them the wrapper to say, this is the package that has this information to know that this would be ideal for um, you know, knowledge graph or rich snippets in organic search. You need to give them those, those teasers and schema markup is the way to do that. Lastly of the three C's is credibility. So best practices. What are some of those? One is make your site fast. Use the Google Site Speed tool at web.dev and run it and then send it to your developers. Make fast, please, now. And they will look through and, and it'll tell you exactly like minimize CSS, um, use um, new format, high res, sorry, high speed download images that are vector based. 
um, usually it's images and video that slow your site down the most. Bloated JavaScript, unused CSS, these are all the most common that I see. Um, domain agent expiration, you can't change how old your domain is, but you can book it out. It behooves you to book out five to 10 years on your expiration date. It sounds silly, but Google looks at that as you're committed to your, to your business. Um, inbound links, that's, we can we'll talk more about that, but generating links is really important. Um, from relevant sites that are highly credible. And the other one is obviously reviews. So you can see here's the Brookdale Lake Oswego or Oswego Springs in Portland. Um, 20, oh my God, my eyesight's following me. 20 reviews, 4.0, four stars. Um, four on Yelp, four is a five, right? Because Yelp's um, criminal um, idea of um, artificially lowering your scores to force you into advertising. They can screw off, but I don't know if anybody from Yelp's on this call, but Caring doesn't do that nonsense. So um, so with Google, they're not making money off reviews, so they don't care about artificially lowering them. So you should have a four to five stars. In senior care, I typically see three, eight to three to four, six. Um, but the idea is you need at least 12 reviews. That's it, most I see are using the 30, 40, 50, 100. This is actually a relatively low number of reviews. It might be a newer home actually. Um, and then another thing to do is use um, site colon and then your domain to see how many pages you have. And you can see that there are 30, almost 3,800 pages on Brookdale's website. I feel like they have almost more facilities than they have pages on their website. So that's actually a surprisingly small website for such a large organization. But you can actually look at all their title tags and med descriptions and see how they're optimizing. You can look at your own site and glance and see how it's being optimized. Um, name, address, phone number, all this um, managing your local reviews is really important and your local listings across multiple data feeds, business listings, mapping software, really important. So um, a lot of facilities we've worked with encourage them to have a weekly to bi-monthly check-in on reviews. So that when there's new reviews, you talk about who responds, how do you respond, and um, how do you fix anything that's less than five stars, right? Because um, how, how can we get five stars? You need to ask. Um, so that's, I have a whole separate presentation on that for another day that we did maybe eight years ago with Karen. Um, on the credibility side, just a deeper dive on the third C here is the idea of, of targeting specific keywords in the search engine result pages or the SERPs as we call them. So when you can see here is an example of caring.com, 10 best um, healthcare, home care services. Um, well, what happens is if you look down below on the right there, it's people also ask, those are called rich snippets. And if you click on the down arrow, somebody answered this and it's usually caring and other large providers of, of content. And you want to be that best answer. So when I ask Google, you know, closest facility, or as I did with Alexa, you know who over here, um, she didn't she didn't hear me this time, is um, is that you need to you want to game that to be the best answer using uh, voice search optimization or rich snippets or, or schema markup. Um, using link to is competitive research. So link to colon and see who's linking to the Brookdale near you or the big player near you, the big facility or big competitor. And are those, which of those sites should be linking to you as well? Business directories, local commute, um, um, chambers of commerce, et cetera. My favorite uh, tip though, pro tip is Haro, helperreporter.com or help a reporter out. Um, it's an Allen by Cision, a big PR um, aggregator technology platform. And, the, and so six to eight, 10 times a week, I pitch Haro. What that means is I get three emails a day from, I just look at the business section. People asking questions about chat GTP or search or web three or the metaverse. And I will answer say, here's my credentials. Here's my answer and here's more information. And um, for the last six years, I've averaged hundred press mentions a year. Now I put, you know, on average now about five minutes per pitch because I recycle a lot of the pitches and some of them I turn into blog posts. You can see that's an example of a pitch that ended up with this 27 social media pros share their best Twitter tips. That was June of 18, but that was the pitch that I did that led to the quote in the article. Why do I do that? Well, not only just to have fuel for my social media work uh, for our social media marketing, but also um, it drives a link back. So in exchange for my expertise, these websites will give you a link back and that's how you boost your domain authority and your rankings. So let's touch on a few digital marketing trends before we wrap up here. And I'll go quickly here. So the first trend I mentioned earlier was artificial intelligence and as made popular since December with chat GTP. Oh, GPT, I think I, that's a typo. So either way, um, AI will fix that for us. Um, but GPT, GPT, 
No, any, maybe I'm wrong. Either way, um, the idea is what's so special about chat is that these AI chatbots is that they have this massive database called the internet. Then they have this intelligence engine, machine learning saying, when you say, um, please rewrite our homepage in Snoop Dogg's voice, it'll do that for you. I'm not sure where that's gonna get you, but you can do that. For fun, the first thing I would do if, when you get into chat uh, is to have it write a bio, bio for you to see how accurate it is. Because you'll find it's 80, sometimes 90% accurate. Um, but it gives you a sense of, and then how well it writes it. Um, but I did one, we work with the wine industry here in Oregon. And I had them write a, a, why would I buy wine from Willamette Valley? And it goes into all the awards. We beat, we beat France in France with red, our red wines. Just, just humble brag. So, um, but I had them write a, just a 800 words about the Willamette Valley wines. And I sent it to our contact at the local uh, trade organization. She's like, this is amazing. Um, so there's a lot you can do, but I've written about this and I've spoken about it. It is not a replacement for people. It is an empowerment tool for research and ideation, synthesis of information, organization or structure of information, you know, draft of copy, um, sections of copy. Um, you can even use it for design and cleaning up code. It's phenomenal cleaning up code if you have a problem with code. Um, I also like it what we use it at Dexia to help expedite and streamline and clean up our data analysis and reporting for our, for our ongoing marketing, digital marketing work in particular. Second trend, this is my favorite animation, this one's for Olivia, is um, the loss of ad targeting. Um, it's, you know, it's late for you, but it's lunch for me coming up, um, is that the ad industry is being turned upside down by the, the loss of third party cookies. So, you know, you're no longer getting that critical cookie data from, from caring or other sites once uh, there's no handoff pretty soon here. Now, um, Google and Chrome have extended that another two years from the first day they said they'd sunset it this year. It's gonna be end of next year. But um, the idea, um, it's not actually the end of 23, I think it's 24 now. But the idea is that it's really important for you to be collecting first party data or something called zero party where uh, people are actually saying, please, here's my information, take care of me. That's pretty rare. You have to be a really hip, cool brand with a lot of value. But at least the idea of first party is get people to your website, get their email address, build a relationship. Second party is um, instead of retailers like Amazon or Target, it would be through like a caring is having some sort of relationship so you can get some of that data, right? So that's um, a benefit of working with a partner that has that, sec that second secondary data channel that they're willing to help you use to target. Um, and the third uh, trend is this omni-channel, which I hinted at at the very top of the, 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 the hour, which is simply this. Multi-channel marketing is simply, I'm hitting you through every channel. Omnichannel marketing is I'm seamlessly messaging you based on the context of which device you're on and when, you're, when I'm on that device and what mindset I'm on at that device. So I don't have a lot of table stakes right now in senior care other than my passion for it. We have a whole um, ebook on um, content marketing for senior living organizations that we wrote many years ago. But um, the, the point is that it's really about the seamlessness. And these new tools are making it easier and easier to have a seamless, you know, how you call into a IVR system and they ask for your phone number, your name three to four times each time they hand you over. That is BS. A good omnichannel system will know who you are from the start to the finish, no matter where you are, and give you what you need when you need it, or not have to ask because it already knows. Sometimes that can be creepy, but omnichannel is the future. The tools are getting more and more affordable. So even the smaller facilities, um, can can take advantage. Here's some helpful resources uh, when you get a copy of this deck from Olivia and the Caring uh, Crew. Um, link to our deep insight section at anvilmedia.com. Um, and there's um, partners at Caring. It's a great sales and marketing blog I recommend. Some link to specific subparts of Google and their resources. Um, HubSpot has some great resources. So these actually links go to specific, um, in some cases, specific pages that are helpful related to this article. So um, some quick takeaways. You wanna master the fundamentals before you get all howdy tatty. So if your boss is coming to you with chat GTP saying do this, and you're saying, well, we still don't have an event strategy or we're not doing SMS messaging or you know, Kent told us we need to have a PR program. Um, get those fundamentals done. Plug the holes in the sieve before you start pouring a bunch of water, right? Um, integrate the different channels. Make sure they're talking together through Omnichannel. And if you have questions or want to stay in touch, um, you can email me, kent at dexia.com and check out dexia.com to sign up for our newsletter to stay in touch. 
um, and then check out the Anvil um, section, the information insights market resource session section, and we migrate that in the next quarter over to Dexia. Over to you, Olivia. Wow, thanks, Ken. And like I said, very meaty presentation we just had, and I know there are some questions that came through, so I'm excited to get to those. Uh, but really appreciate you walking through that. I think we touched on some very interesting topics here. Um, one question that we had come through uh, that, you know, towards the beginning, we talked through key performance indicators, um, but, you know, you didn't mention ROI as a KPI. So what about yeah. ROI? <laughs> so ROI is the KPI across all of the KPIs, right? So you can look at a return on investment for awareness, for engagement, but um, you're right. I mean, I guess to, 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 st to streamline to, to save time next time, I will add ROI to the very bottom of the funnel. Um, but I look at it every stage. What is the ROI on our time to blog? What is the ROI on our time to pitch the media? So, um, and, and what is the ROI? Are these impressions, is the awareness moving the needle? Are, is the, are these engagement metrics moving the needle? Are they generating eventually some sort of leads or, or inquiries, inbound um, form completions, et cetera? So um, I would look at ROI um, down the funnel across all the disciplines, um, but at the very end, it ultimately is based on, on the move-ins at some point in some factor, right? Absolutely. So when you evaluate, right. So, and Karen has built a whole model on making sure that it wor is worth your time, as have we at Dexia and other nine agencies I've been at is, if you invest a dollar with me, if I don't return a dollar fifty to, to $100,000, I'm out of business. So it, th there has to be an ROI in, in everything you do. That's a great question. And I would add too, it's it's about the movements, but it's also about the LTV of that new client yes. or that new resident. So you know, how long does your average resident stay with you um, or your average client? How many hours are they taking uh, of your home care agency? So, so things like that definitely factor in as well. So um, tracking, tracking is always important. Um, another question that we received is, do you suggest FAQs on the community level care pages or have separate page for FAQs? That, uh -huh. That's a great question. Love that question. The answer is absolutely. So you want um, corporate level FAQs about the organization, a brand, careers, recruiting, facilities, just in general, a philosophy, all that. And then you to, to really rank well in local, you need localized FAQs. In fact, your let's say you have five facilities on one brand domain website. You need dedicated location pages for each facility and ideally sub pages that talk about the amenities, um, the location, FAQs for each of those unique uh, locations. A lot of my experience for the last 25 years has been hospitality, which carries over naturally, extends into the senior care space, which is how do you get a website to rank for Portland hotels, right? When all you are is a hotel. So we built out extensive amenities sections and entertainment things to do. And also it helps you target who you want to bring in as a guest. We have a, we had a, a client here, Provenance Hotels, that had three boutique hotels downtown, but they each had different audiences in slightly different neighborhoods. So we had a lot to work with, right? So do that with your facilities as well. What makes those facilities unique, those neighborhoods unique, the people, the employees uh, unique? Right, and a few questions have come through regarding this presentation, loving the content, so that's great. And um, people are asking, will a copy of this presentation be sent out? The answer is yes, we are recording. And we'll also send the slides. So all these links that you've seen, uh, you'll have access to those as well. Um, another question we received is, how do I find out more about Google GA4? Uh, good question. Uh, I'm going to do a quick Google search here. Um, so we have, um, if it's all right, I can do, I can send it. Well, man. So we have this beginner's guide to Google Analytics GA4. Um, I don't know if I can do this, but I'll send we that. We can send okay it to send that? That? We okay. can send it in the recap email as well. So okay, we'll, we'll and I'll there too. and I'll put that another one our senior care content marketing uh, thing. But we, um, I would just literally Google GA four migration, and you will find a lot of good content. Um, I'll send this other one here too. Um, oh, March twenty two. Oh, that's all. Oh yeah, we have a whole webinar. Um, 
sorry on this. And and it, and if Karen's interested, I'm at, I'm happy to volunteer the more seasoned Dexia team to talk about GA4 migration for you guys if you're interested. Great. Um, and on a similar note, where's the best place to track conversions? So I would say the best place to track conversions, you know, it depends on every every company has a different setup and technology stack, Mar Martech stack as we call it. But I would say I would start with Google Analytics and as a great place to just understand conversions based on inquiries, in, inbound form completion. So the thank you page is triggered. That's an easy one. Another is your email or marketing automation platform. As I mentioned, as simple as free as MailChimp to as elaborate and robust as HubSpot or Marketo is there's, there's all kinds of, the full customer journey can be tracked there. Um, GA, Google Analytics is good for, we, they got to a, an action and that's about as far as you're going to take them. Then you need to kick them into your, your marketing automation or your CRM, whatever platform you're using there. Absolutely. Um, we have a couple questions related to GMB. Um, yeah. Yep. So I come from the agency world myself and I've felt this pain. I feel this question a little too personally. Uh, my GMB page was suspended by Google with no details. What would you suggest? Kent, have you been in their <sighs> shoes as well? Uh, well, yeah, as an agency, we had um, 10 years of our reviews of our old Anvil office disappear forever when we moved, and we moved, for, we moved 14 years ago. And so I lost, I lost like, you know, two thirds, a third of the life of, of reviews. And so, yeah, it, it can happen even to the pros like us. Um, typically, they, they, one thing about Google Local, to my understanding from the team, our team at Dexia that specializes in local SEO, is that there's actual real customer service or support for Google Local where there wasn't before. So you should be able to ask them. Um, however, Yvonne, I'm happy to, if you email me, I'm happy to see if the team can give you a quick answer just as a favor as, a, as part of the caring.com network. Great, great. Yeah, and I would echo that in that there's usually a place to submit a ticket yes. and they'll ask for some documents or, or a way to get that profile back up for you. So good luck. <laughs> Hopefully that, that resolves soon. Um, how important are Q&As on your Google My Business? Should we answer those ourselves or better to wait for people to ask questions? Thank you, Brian, for asking that because it is, um, I would say it's medium importance to, to utilize the Q&A but it's 100% maximum DEF CON 5 important, to, or I guess you could say DEF CON 1 is the most important, um, to answer them. Don't wait, don't let somebody else answer, you should answer. It, the brand should always be answering because you don't want, you don't control somebody else's response, you may not agree with it, may not even be appropriate, angry ex uh, employee, who knows? I'm sure that won't be your, your case, Brian, but it does happen. So um, I actually advise, my prospective clients as I talk to them back when I used to do sales more is ask the, have your friends and family ask the most common questions in, um, in Google, G, uh, Google My Business or Google Local, and then go answer it immediately. Um, anybody can ask it. Um, but it's also a good reminder of looking at common questions on GMB across you and your local competitors and even regional or even national, nationwide competitors, what are the most common questions? Those should be in your FAQ as well on your website. So answer them. Don't let somebody else answer them, but have one or two that have been asked that you answer. And same thing with reviews. Thank every review that's four plus stars and use that as a reader. Whatever they said they loved about you, reiterate this. That's our commitment. That's our purpose. That's our core values. And if something, if you get a fail, like a, a one to three and a half star, Use this opportunity to turn them around. When people have a bad experience, they tell five people. When they have a, a bad experience turned around, they'll tell 10. So in my hospitality world, the last 20 something years, I've always said, this is an opportunity. Every, every screw up is an opportunity to double your reach with an, with an ambassador. Absolutely. And it's not just an opportunity for that individual. It's the people who look next, who see that, hey, you were listening to that feedback and you, you know, tried to resolve it and help them versus just ignoring it. So it, it also speaks to the, it's got a halo effect there as well. Uh, we have another yeah. question here uh, and we will send out the links that you provided. Um, I don't think they go to the, the attendees on the webinar, but we'll send it in our recap email, um, the links to the GA4 guides. Uh, but is there anywhere else that people can learn more about running Google Analytics? Uh, definitely Google Analytics has a bunch of tutorials, a bunch of resources. 
you're safe to go there. Um, then I would broaden out to get some of the other folks like Dexia, Anvil, or other our competitors in the space that have done great tutorials. Probably YouTube is the great uh, place to go. The webinar that I just sent in the link in the file, there's a, a 40 minute webinar that talks through it. So I think that'll be a great place to start. And Rachel on our team is phenomenal, so. Great, well, we are at time. Uh, there are a couple more questions here that were a little bit more specific. So we'll be following up offline to make sure that we address everything that came through. Thank you so much for those who did submit questions. Um, and so we appreciate everyone who attended today. And we would, of course, love your feedback on today's presentation. So if you have anything that you thought of during today's presentation or any topics that you'd like us to dive into in the future, such as GA4, uh, we'd love to hear it. There will be a survey that pops up as the webinar closes where you can let us know, um, as well as you can contact this phone number um, and the emails listed here. To stay on top of Caring's upcoming trainings, I encourage you to follow us on LinkedIn and check out our industry website, partners.caring.com. So with that, thank you, Kent, so much for joining us today and uh, such a great presentation. And we will let you all get back to the commendable work of helping seniors and hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everybody.